Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Sapphire Nitro RX 480, which is the first custom cool card in the 400 series that we're going to get a chance to take a look at here on the channel. Recently, we got a chance to test out the GTX 1060, as well as the reference model of the RX 480. That was the 8GB version, and this is also the 8GB version of the RX 480 here as well on the Nitro, but they do also have a 4GB version that I'm told, but we're not looking at that specifically here today. So let's start off by taking a look at the design of the Sapphire Nitro RX 480. You can see it does differ from the reference design, whereas this is not using a blower style cooler. Instead, it has a dual fan intake, which blows across the radiator and then exhausts out the back of the PCB, where this p particular backplate actually has two cutouts where you can see that it helps push that air out the back. So if you're out there running a large case with decent airflow, then something like the Sapphire Nitro should run a lot cooler for you in your system compared to something like maybe like a mini ITX rig, where you may benefit more from a blower style cooler in that particular instance. I know personally in my testing that I did straight away in my mini ITX build that I saw the temperatures on this card get up into the high 80s, which was a lot higher than I would have liked. And in that particular type of case, I probably would use a reference blower style cooler but once I moved this over to my N2 Evolve the temperatures dropped down considerably and got to what I would consider to be much more ideal temps in a scenario that most people would probably be running in a larger case not really taking one of these cards and putting it into a mini ITX enclosure. Looking at the shroud on this card, it is plastic around the fans, but on the back for the back plate, they are using an aluminum design, which gives it a nice premium feel in my personal opinion, and I love the color scheme that they've gone with here on the Nitro using the silver and black, mostly because I'm a Raiders fan, so um, that definitely, you know, plays to a color scheme that I like, having that nice monochrome look. So yeah, the back plate is gorgeous, really good job that they've done there on that, and they've also got some uh, some LEDs here on the side of the card. The sapphire lettering here uh, will light up blue by default, and you can cycle through with a button on here to go into a mode that will either cycle through colors, or you can have it kind of pulsing on blue or red. Eventually, you will have full RGB controller support within the sapphire software, but right now that's not currently available, so we just have to wait for that update to become available to be able to have full RGB control on here, but right now it's kind of limited. You also can switch between different BIOSes on here. They have It has, comes with two BIOS by default. So on the stock BIOS, this card would run at 1342 megahertz. That's what it would boost up to on its max boost. And if you switch it over, it goes into a silent mode, which would run the, at 1266 megahertz. And then in that mode right there, you shouldn't have to do any adjustments and the card should run extremely quiet for you and at 1266 megahertz. The Nitro card does utilize a single 8-pin power connector on the side of the card, so it's not mounted in the traditional spot. It's kind of off to the side, and I'll leave that up to you guys, you know, what you guys, what you feel about that. If you if it's something you like or you don't like, you can let me know down in the comments below. But coming over to the other side of the card with the rear I.O., one of the concerns that I did have here is that it only has two DisplayPort connectors, whereas the Reference 480 has three DisplayPort connectors. And as someone that runs three displays over, well, DisplayPort, you know, for me, this was, I did find this to be limiting. They've decided to go here instead of, ha they have two HDMI connectors and then a DVI. So the DVI was not on the reference cards, but the reference cards did have three DisplayPort and a single HDMI, which I personally would have rather had instead of two HDMI and two DisplayPort. So running the card idle, I saw it mostly sitting at around 45 degrees Celsius at the desktop, but when I went into actual games and I started to get things ramping up in something like Overwatch and it was running, you know, for over an hour, I would usually see my temps settling at around 75 degrees Celsius with the card being able to maintain over 1300 megahertz on its boost clock. You know, it's supposed to go all the way up to 1342, but I found it maintaining at least above 1300, which is more than I could say for the, the reference, you know, model of the RX 480. And at that, it was sitting at around 75 degrees Celsius. And, you know, on the reference model RX 480, if I wanted to get those types of clock speeds, I would certainly have to overclock it. And then the temperature temperatures would go up, up into the high 80s. And I would begin to see the card thermal throttle quite a bit. On the Nitro 480, that is not the case, whereas this card is running at 1342, so right within 8 megahertz of the max overclock that I was able to get in my reference card of 1350 megahertz, and it does that right out of the box without you having to touch anything. You don't have to do any, any power adjustments or anything like that. It just runs at that completely stable. 
Now, the downside that I saw there is that I didn't get any additional overclocking headroom as a result of that extra cooling. So even though the card was running at about 75 degrees Celsius in my gaming testing, it didn't, you know, uh, c contribute to me being able to then increase my clock speeds any further beyond the 1342 boost clock of the Nitro card. So I didn't, you know, increase it to 1350 like my reference card at all because I found that if I did that, the temperatures would start to go up and I would also see a lot more uh, fluctuation in the stability of my core clock speeds where it would start to drop down, you know, well below 1300 as a result of this. And if I just kept it at stock speeds, it would stay a lot faster and more stable. So the Nitro card seems to be a better option for someone that just wants to take it out and plug it into their system and have it, you know, running at, you know, near the maximum potential overclock of, you know, what I would think an RX 480 is supposed to hit. And that 1350 or 1342 megahertz around that area does seem to be more of a limitation of the 480 than necessarily the Nitro card here. So I think Sapphire's done really the best that they could and kind of push this chip, um, you know, right to within an inch of its life and it because it really couldn't go any further for me in my testing. So the numbers that we have here in my performance is the Sapphire Nitro running at its 1342 boost clock, which, like I said, was able to maintain over 1300 in the majority of the time versus my RX 480, which I did have overclocked to 1350 megahertz. So a lot of the numbers you're going to see here, the, the Nitro is either going to be just trailing behind or kind of tying the reference 480. And then, you know, the 1060 is doing what we expect that to do. That was able to overclock to over 2000 megahertz. So that is really the area where the 1060 is kind of winning the most right now against any 480 is its overclocking potential and being able to put, you know, an additional like 200 to 250 megahertz on the core with the 1060 and also running cooler as a result of that. In my endurance test on the RX 480 Nitro um, with Gears of War, with the, which I had running in 1440p, you know, max textures and all that stuff, I saw this card getting up to around 80 degrees Celsius. If I were to increase my system fans to up to, up to 75%, I would see that uh, that could drop down to around 76 to 77 degrees. But, you know, in most of my game testing, like I said, around 75 Celsius is where I saw the Nitro sitting, which is much better than the reference model 480 at, you know, almost 90 degrees for the same clock speed. So all of that should be noted, but we're going to go ahead and jump into the rock and benchmarks now, and then we will come back to discuss. Before we discuss those numbers, I wanted to give you guys a quick sound test of how the Nitro 480 sounds with it under full load with the fans at 2300 RPM with the case door on versus the case door off and also show you just how easy it is to take off uh, the fans on this particular card because F Sapphire is actually allowing you to RMA just the fans in case one of your fans ever goes bad. You could just go ahead and pop it off and send it to them and they'll cross ship you back one of the fan replacements. So really nice feature that Sapphire is offering that right there. But let's go ahead and take a listen to how this card is sounding now under full load. 
now listening to the graphics card at 2300 RPM, which is its max stock fan speed for the Sapphire 480. I'm going to go ahead and take the side panel off so you can get a listen to it now. All right, so we got to look at the numbers there really close as you guys saw like I mentioned to the reference RX 480 really putting it in neck and neck but that is you know just out of the box whereas the reference RX 480 you know I was able to get that up to 1350 megahertz so that's your mileage there on overclock is really going to vary based on the card that that you that you get and the temperatures that you're going to see but one thing for sure is that you can take the Sapphire Nitro out stick it into your system and it's going to be running over 1300 megahertz all the time and it's going to be doing it pretty cool as a result of that at around 75 degrees celsius in most gaming loads and you know it all the games that i tested here you know 1080p and 1440 uh it can handle 1440 in most games at high settings some cases ultra like overwatch i could run that at ultra no problem um but you know 1080p it handles even better you can really max everything out at 1080p on this card um getting over 60 fps even stuff like you know the division and you could probably throw on some more anti-aliasing there my testing was without game works and without anti-aliasing except for fxaa i did use fxaa when it was available but other than that no other anti-aliasing or game works was used um, in my testing on any of these cards just to kind of keep it uh, consistent across the board so i'm going to go ahead and get out of here guys please let me know your thoughts for the sapphire nitro um, down below and I there will be links down in the description for all of these cards if you want to go pick one of them up especially the sapphire nitro and i will uh, catch you guys next time